Ah, gimmicks, those little tricks people use to lure you into their business like a clever magician. And boy, oh boy, Power Rangers sure know how to play that game. They've got their own bag of gimmicks that's as full as a clown's pocket. These gimmicks add some pizzazz to their gear and give each series its own special flavor. Some folks say gimmicks can make or break a toy line and a season. And you know what? They're not pulling your leg. What started as a way to make toys more collectible has turned into a full-blown cash cow, with new trinkets popping up faster than weeds in a garden. Every week, they'd unleash new power-ups, new trinkets, and new gimmicks tied to zords or some cheesy life lesson. They'd market them like crazy, practically shouting from TV screens, Hey kiddos, get your hands on these magical gizmos. Now let's chat about the good, the bad, and the downright hilarious gimmicks that have graced the Power Rangers universe. Buckle up, my friend, because this is the wild ride through gimmick history you never knew you needed. Back in the day, in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series, they had these power coins. These shiny coins were like the name tags at a party, telling everyone which ranger was who. They'd stick them in their morphers and poof! Instant ranger transformation. Each coin had a unique symbol, like a T-Rex, a mammoth, or a pterodactyl. Super Sentai had only six coins, but Mighty Morphin went all out with 13. They just couldn't get enough. Then, in Power Rangers Wild Force, we had the Power Animal Crystals. These little see-through spheres were like snow globes on steroids. They had tiny wild swords inside and were used to summon the wild zords. Collectible goodies that made fans go wild, representing different rangers and their trusty zords. Next up was Power Rangers Ninja Storm, and they brought in the Power Spheres. Picture small, round discs that the rangers would jam into the Megazord cockpit, and bam! Out popped a sphere with a surprise weapon. It was like a lucky dip for giant robots. The toys got an upgrade, and kids could swap between different weapons like it was a lunchtime cafeteria trade. Ah, Power Rangers RPM, the season that gave us engine cells. These little power packs juiced up everything from weapons to morphers and Megazords. They had Megazord cells and morpher cells, each with its own fancy features. The American version had plastic discs, but the Japanese version, those cheeky devils called them engine souls, had lights and electronics. Fancy, huh? Now let's fast forward to Power Rangers Samurai, where they whipped out the power discs, spin them, place them on the spin sword, and well, that's about it. These discs didn't do much, to be honest. They were like that one kid at a party who just stood in the corner, not really adding to the fun. Nice try, Samurai, but no dice. Ah, and here it is. The pinnacle of Power Rangers gimmicks. Power Rangers Megaforce and the action card game. They went all out with these cards, my friend. Each card represented a weapon, a zord, or a superpower. You'd get them bundled with action figures, Megazord sets, and any other toy they could stick them to. The kids went bonkers, collecting and playing the game like there was no tomorrow. It was like Pokemon, but with more spandex and less catching creatures. Last but not least, in Power Rangers Super Megaforce, we had the Ranger Keys. These tiny figures could flip and slide into the morpher, making all sorts of noise. They were a throwback to the successful Ranger Key toy line from Super Sentai, because if it ain't broke, why not flip it a few times for good measure? Gimmicks have played a star role in the Power Rangers toy line, some shining brighter than others. They've added a splash of functionality and collectability to the toys. But hey, let's not go overboard and bombard our poor consumers with too much sparkle. After all, even the mightiest Megazord needs a little balance.